Welcome back. This is Evie. And Evie decided that she wanted to join in on this intro. Hey? She's half a horsepower, maybe one horsepower with a tune in the 85. Anyway, it's been a long time between drinks for us. Uh, and if it hasn't been a long time between drinks and you only clicked this video because it said building a bulletproof EJ and you thought, well, that could be a laugh, um, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> so when's the last time we saw the GC8? The last time we saw the GC8 was when the Law Wizards actually worked their magic and gave it the most insane roll cage of all time. Uh, and so now it's on to the next stage. So obviously the GC8 was completely toast. It was blown up. First things first, we are not mechanics, not engine builders. We're not offering advice on how this should be done or how you've done it different or anything like that. Literally, Dean's old man, which is the guy that you'll see me putting together the motor with, um, never put an EJ together in his life. Did some homework, did some digging, found out every single thing that he could about the motor, put it together with a nice informed opinion. That's exactly how it went while we drank beers. That's exactly how it went. <laughs> So anyway, enough of the small talk. Let's jump in. Uh, this is definitely a different episode. It's more of a voiceover episode because I wanted to get as technical as I could. Um, I think it came out all right. And if you if you do like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. So anyway, let's jump in. The first step is having all of the machine work carried out on the motor. This is extremely precise work and must be done by people who actually know what they're doing, probably not us. This includes getting CNC billet inserts, cooling them down to below freezing so that they shrink and then tapping them into the EJ257 semi-closed deck block. This is the process of getting a closed deck block. Other works done were clearance for the 14mm head studs and crankcase dowel inserts down the main bearing journal. Once all of this is complete, the block is decked and it comes out looking like a brand new engine. Subi Performance on YouTube is the channel to go to for more on this process. This guy is a true wizard at what he does. Now that the machine work is done, we can start on the rotating assembly. Even though we're using really reputable and good quality parts, there's always going to be slight differences in the weight of these parts. So what we've done is individually weigh each piston, each rod and each gudgeon pin to ensure its weight and then reweigh it to prove the credibility and then note it down. This is going to allow us to assemble it with the most amount of balance possible. As you can see here, we have on cylinder one and two, 584 grams and three and four at 582 grams. This may not sound like a lot, but at high RPM, your bearings are going to thank you. Next up, we're gapping the piston rings. This is done via a feeler gauge and measured to thousands of an inch. And it's pretty likely that every person, workshop or builder is going to have their own secret source for these sizes. In our case, I'm pretty sure Dean just literally found a table that had an extreme boost category and that was all the convincing that he needed. Gapping the rings themselves is a very long and repetitive job. It involves fitting the ring to the cylinder and then checking it against the feeler gauge to achieve the required gap. If it doesn't fit, then you remove the ring, grind some off in the specialty grinding tool and then repeat it. Notice when fitting the ring to the cylinder, we use a piston to sit it down. This is to ensure that the ring is in fact sitting flat in the cylinder and not giving us a false reading. Again, also ensuring repeatability. Now that all of our rings are gapped correctly, we also weigh them for the sake of it, allocate them to a piston and rod setup, and then store them away. We now spray the block down with what seems like 45 litres of degreaser and it's ready for its first assembly. The first job is to confirm our bearing clearances on the main journal bearings. We've done this by using the plastic gauge type method which involves putting a thin strip of material onto the crank and then torquing the crankcase halves down to the required torque. It's important to note here that some of the crankcase bolts actually seal against the water galleries in the block so you have to make sure that you get the correct bolts in the correct location. The ARP instructions make this super simple. Once the block is torqued down, we then remove it all in the reverse order and we can carefully remove the crank and measure how much the bearing has squished our plastic gauge by checking it against the scale on the side. This now shows our clearances. With our main bearings now within acceptable tolerances, we start to prep the block for the final assembly. This includes all brand new o-rings and inserting the crankcase dowels. Now that it's time to start assembling the rods onto the crank itself, firstly we coat the bearings in assembly lube and ensure that the bolts have an adequate amount of ARP thread lube on them. This ensures accurate torque can be applied and avoids binding or friction on the bolts. Again, these are all torqued down to the manufacturer's specs supplied by ARP. Now we just got to torque them all down.
So now we are ready for the final piece of the puzzle, assembling and inserting the pistons. The rings are now set onto each piston in their correct order and then compressed with this adjustable tool. Having our time again, I'd recommend buying the ARP equivalent of this tool as it works flawlessly. This adjustable one wasn't very user friendly, but it did get the job done. Pistons are then tapped down into the cylinder and lined up with their associated rod. This is another slow and steady process. After they come into a line, the gudgeon pin is lubed up and slid in. Nice. This is made easy by using this tool Dean's old man machined up for it. This process is then repeated for the remaining pistons. Uh, so learning is absolutely right. I'm really sorry, but this dog is not going to leave me alone. <laughs> we back, baby. <laughs> uh, so learning is right. I learned a heap in that, in that whole experience of just how stuff gets done and how stuff's thrown together. It's something that a lot of people wouldn't see. A lot of people, including myself, would just give somebody a big bag of cash and say, I want this motor, build it. And that's fine. I get that. As you guys would absolutely know, full credit to Dean who actually bought the GC8 as a side project of the 1000 horsepower sequential GTR that he built. It just turned out the way that the cookie crumbled was they both got built at the same time. So long time viewers, you guys would know that uh, you guys will see that the GTR is actually in pieces in the background. Uh, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. It just happened to be built at the same time we filmed all this. So, um, there's people out there in the world like Dean who will literally build cars from the ground up. Then there's people out there in the world that will literally give big bags of cash to engine builders and car builders and say, I want to go seven seconds. The GC8 is getting a wild heart transplant. Um, and given the weight of the car, it's going to be pretty out of this world. So anyway, let us know what you thought of this episode. Next episode, uh, head studs going in, cams going in, heads going on, all the rest of it. Uh, it'll be just the part two of finishing everything off. So um, if you guys like this type of episode or you're kind of digging where this is going, then give it a comment. If you didn't like this episode, then I'm all ears. Let me know. I'll um I'll get my assistant onto it and she can <laughs> she can she can direct the hate. Hey? What do you think? <laughs> Pardon? Hey? Don't try and kiss me. <laughs> anyway. She's going down. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Ever since you shut the door on everything we knew You're too late for love Feeling your true love Feeling on love Feeling your true love Feeling on Just gonna do this up Quick! It's clicked. Yeah, it clicked. The rings are set onto each piston in there. <sighs> <coughs> <sighs> awesome.